G'day folks, I am Beanie and I am going to be showing you a me drawing a Tyrannosaurus Rex from Jurassic Park. I did make a little video before, wasn't going exactly how I wanted it to, so I decided instead of doing the traditional, this is how you draw a shape, you draw this shape and that shape and that shape, I'm just going to show you guys how I draw a T-Rex. I usually start off as if it's like a skeleton. So I put in its head, just like to kind of in, put a rough shape to indicate its head. And I, yes, I do generally start to tend with the, uh, starting with the heads. And then you put in a, let's put in a neck, like this. Put in the shape of the neck. Uh, then we put in, the, the, the neck is a bit out of shape, as I guess you can see. Then we put in the body. I mean, really, you sh generally people would be like, you put in a cylinder or something to draw your shape, and that's really how you should be teaching how to draw, but I'm just doing it my way for now. You kind of draw in where the ribs would be, that's where the rib would be, that's where the leg, top of the leg goes. It is always best to, it's best to like draw a, a T-Rex in, in a stick figure format I guess to start off with. This is its arms. Stick figure is kind of like, you know, skeleton as well. Some, uh, when, when drawing stick figures, Think of your stick figures as if they're skeletons, not stick figures. Stick figures are, are a great way of um, studying your compositions. But you pretend that your stick figure is a skeleton and you work around that, you build up your muscles and all that stuff from there. So there's the neck. You draw its ribs, sort of, but that just indicates where the ribs would be. That is where the pelvis uh, bone would be, and uh, the, the leg bone would probably be about there. Imagining this is a three-dimensional image, uh, which means that this would be like a bit of a cylinder, kind of thing, cylinder, kind of thing, and then you, the other leg would probably be in there. Now, we are drawing the leg right now, but it will not be visible, not this part. This just basically gives you an idea of where the knee should be placed. Because if you just drew without that, you'd be like, well, where do I, where do I start the knee from? Do I start the knee from up here? Do I start the knee from down there? So you draw your skeleton of your knee, and then because dinosaurs, T-Rex, they got kind of like chicken legs, the, well, chicken bird legs in a, you know, in the way that their knees and ankles are kind of like, well, you'll, you'll see when I draw it. And there's its ankle, and there's its... It's, um, what would you call that? Technically speaking, when you look at, um, at, like, some dinosaur bone skeletons, they actually, their, um, toes go all the way up to their ankles. So, what I'll do is I'll put in its feet now. Still stick figure form. Um... I might make this T-Rex lifting its foot, so it's like about to take its next step. So, what I also do is I tend to make my... I, I like to make its feet kind of curve like that, not... It's kind of hard to explain, but... it T-Rex feet, they tend to look better when you have a slight curve. So... That's the foot. Well, actually, if it was the 
the foot is like yeah i was going to i was going to go on about on a tangent about teenage mutant ninja turtles which has nothing to do with t-rex anyway moving on we would put in uh the pelvis would be like thus and you'd have like a bit of a pelvic thing and if you've ever seen a t-rex skeleton it looks kind of like that then you put in your tail i'm just gonna move my bag of my bag of chocolate out of the way so you draw your a line for your tail and it curves with the flow of the spine like so and then you fill in there so like you you, you connect the skin from the pelvis to the other end of the pelvis and then that's where the tail would start so you draw your tail like so and then we put in a this is again the pelvis so we want to start the muscles that's probably the best way of thinking about it you think of where the muscles connect you have a muscle that connects that part of the leg to the knee so when it contracts it brings the knee up and then it does the opposite on the other side to bring the knee down depending on what kind of depending on how you've seen some dinosaur muscles sometimes they will go out to there sometimes they'll go in doesn't really matter too much then I draw in the knee and I suppose I'll do it on this end as well draw in the indication of the legs draw in a knee and if you've ever seen your own well you've obviously seen your own legs but um and I don't know the technical term of the bone the bone that goes under from your knee down to your ankle if you ever just give your your leg a bit of a feel right now feel the front of your leg in that area and feel the back the back is meaty which is your muscle the front feels fairly bony well should feel very bony it is the same with t-rex you don't draw much muscle in the front of its bone you draw most of its calf muscle in the back. And that's pretty much the same with any animal, really. When you think about it, they're mostly like that. Which is why I draw the calf muscle right out there at the back. Because the bone goes much, much forward. So that is why its calf looks like that I'm just putting in my little in bits of detail might as well draw its ankle I kind of give it an ankle the ball and socket kind of look so then I draw its feet in filling in the the bones pretending that you're drawing meat around the bones maybe I should say and then you draw in your toes the pointy sharp dinosaur toes and dinosaur uh, <laughs> all i guess well if you've seen lizards they have kind of padding under their feet much like humans we have padding under our feet and birds have padding little tiny little lumps of padding under their feet so we do the same for the t-rex we put little lumps of padding under its toes and do it like that then we do it on 
I usually actually find that's better to draw this one first rather than that one, because as you'll see, now my hand is covering the, the other foot, so it's hard to get the proportions right. That is why you should usually start with this foot rather than that foot. So what I, what I usually do to overcome that one is I draw with my pencil out a bit, like so. I'm not sticking strictly to what I've drawn with the skeletal stick figure, but you can draw along. You put in its toes. Um, I was going to put in another toe there, but I'm thinking I might have the foot facing more that way. So, let's put in its padding. It's foot padding. Like so. And then. Go like that. Again, apologies for my sniffling. I've got a, it. Looks like I'm coming down with a bit of a cold. Yay. Now some I, I've seen T Rex has like a little a little tiny little toe down there. You might notice that some birds, maybe your pet dog or cat, has a little toe down there. So won't we won't put it on this one because it'd be hidden behind the foot. But on that one, on this foot, we'll um we'll put that in there. Then we will shape out the foot bit. Uh, let's put in its chest. Give him a bit of a chest muscle, like so, which would connect into its stomach, which would also connect to its pelvis, as you can see. And then you, I like to put in the shape of the stomach to around here, because that indicates the rib cage. You think of it like a horse. You, your horses have um, fairly visible rib cages sometimes, so you'll see like a little bit of rib cage there, and the rib cage kind of goes up to there, and you still see the skin coming from under its rib cage. That's probably where its stomach is. This is where its ribs are. So. To make it a little bit easier to see now, I'm going to erase that part of the leg. Because, you know, we've got our shape in there now, we don't need these lines. We can really erase as much as we want. We've already drawn these parts, so we don't need the, build, the shape build-up elements. Fix up our lines a bit. Fix up our rib cage a bit. Then what we do is follow the spine along from its neck to its back. I I like to put in a bit of muscle lump on its hind leg. So it's not a complete line down to its tail. I mean some sometimes it works better without, but yeah. Um Put in a bit of muscle, just put a little bit of muscle there under its tail. I've seen lots of different artists drawing dinosaur tails like that, so you put in your little indication lines there. Okay, then we put in its little arms because it's got little tiny arms, it's got little little arms. Poor T Rex. I'm going to leave the jokes behind because I'm going to make this video family friendly. So, you put in its arms. You can basically make its arms kind of look human if you really want. Because they kind of do in a way. So, you've got your little, you've got your little uh, muscles there. And then you give it its tiny little fingers, give it little tiny claws. 
poor T Rex in his tiny little hands. I don't think T Rex can draw. Poor guy. Or girl. Or poor it. But yes, I, I think I've made his arm a little bit too thin, to be honest. Can make his arm a little bit thicker. Good thing about drawing with pencil, you can fix up, build up as you go along. So let's erase that little that line. Shame I drew it so dark. But you get the idea. This is this isn't meant to be like a proper drawing by any means. This is just me trying to teach you guys how to how I draw T Rex. So we give its other arm the same kind of treatment. Give it like you know the direction his other arm's going. So you put his arms like so. Roar. No, that's not how T-Rex sounds. Not from Jurassic Park. Actually, fun fact, while I'm fi fi finishing his fingers, there we go, got tongue-tied there, while I'm finishing his fingers, uh, fun fact, the T-Rex from Jurassic Park was a combination of elephant and, I think, lion roars, combining them together to make it sound like a big, big dinosaur. Yeah, that's basically the way to explain it. Anyway, so fun little fact there. Put in its neck, which we've already done. Put in a bit more muscle around its head. Really, I should have started from the head to begin with. So now you're going to see my hand covering most of the dinosaur. I apologize for that. What we do here is maybe we can bring it in a little bit more. There we go. I'll just fix up the focus on the camera. There we go. Let's get to and do the T-Rex head. Alright, so this is kind of like the skull. And another reason why you don't draw like this is because your hand and palm will smudge all of what you've done here. So, learn from my mistakes, kids. So, what we do is kind of pretend you're drawing in his skull, her skull, whichever gender of dinosaur you want it to be. Now... I haven't actually drawn a T-Rex in a while, so I've got to kind of remember. I know that its nose, it's got little tiny nostril holes in its nose. And it's got a bumpy ridge on its nose, on its um, snout. And then it's got a bit of a, a ridge, a... Um, uh, I wouldn't say bony, I'd say a, a bumpy, scaly ridge along its nose. So I'll end up put those in there. And then, it's got a bit of a eyebrow ridge, I suppose, to make it look angry and to make it look fierce and monstrous. So we'll put in its eye ridge. The ridge comes down again. So you've got a bit of a spike, and T-Rex doesn't, his head doesn't finish there. Don't finish it like that. Put in a little bit. Pretend this bulb, or bulge, is an ear. Because that's where his ear would probably be. And then what we'll do is, because, okay, we'll, we'll put in light marks for the, where it's um the holes in its skull would be so you put your um, a head mark there put your eye mark the eye hole from the skull there's another skull there another skull there's usually another hole in that part of the skull then you put in the mouth s part slit um 
And what you want to do is you want to give it a jaw, a nice, strong, thick jaw for tearing at its flesh. Not at its flesh, at other dinosaurs' flesh. So you give it a nice, strong jaw. And it comes together there. I'm not overly happy with how its mouth looks, but for demonstration purposes, we'll go along with it. Maybe I'll just fix up the shape a little bit. Because this is not usually how I would draw the head. It's been a little while since I've drawn a T-Rex head. Let's just say that. Its snout, it usually has a bit of a curve up here and then comes down. I don't know if you've seen like an, um, a snake mouth, how it's got a little bit of a gap there. Don't know if I'm making any sense. So then I draw the, the lower part of its jaw down like so. And connect it with its, give it a strong, powerful jaw with its muscles. Um, to make it look a little bit more 3D, we'll put the other other eye ridge over here, like so. Then we give it a little tiny beady eye. Um, give it some rings around its eye, like you know, if you've seen an if you see old people the the. Uh, lines that they have the wrinkles around their eyes so do a bit like that and then let's put in some teeth it's big dagger like teeth draw them in and then what I'll do now is I'll flesh out his neck a bit. Give him a bit more muscle around the neck area. Then I like to put in some wrinkles down the lower part of his jaw neck area. Then put in some wrinkles. Then this is basically a way you start fleshing out your T-Rex. So let's do that now, shall we? I am a bit of a stickler for details, so this is where I just put in like, you know, some neck creases. It's not going to look perfect because this is a demonstration thing, but sometimes he has neck um, scales down there. Put in some wrinkles around his back. Sometimes, if I was putting in more detail, I'd put little scales in down here, down his arms. Sometimes around here, put little tiny details in there. We are drawing a, a really tiny scale right now, so the detail will be very tiny. Um, oh, that's right. Also up here, if you've seen that lizard uh, mouths, they've got kind of scales that go along the top. Kind of the rim of their mouths. Don't know why it's like that. Nature. But you draw its little scales around its mouth. This is where you, this is where we go into a more advanced leveling of detail of a T Rex. Put in its little t little um bone there, come on. Scales in between the teeth. Told you I get tongue tied. And then sometimes I put in like little scales around its jaw. Then you put in put in some lines to kind of give the sometimes grid structures make good imitation scales. So I'll do that there. Give him some light uh, grid grid fishnet structured scale impressions and we'll put in his um, bumps and and things there put in some lines there 
put his lines there. Make them right, don't put too much effort into them. Here, we'll put in some more... He's got like some sort of um, armor plating looking um, chest scales, much like a crocodile. If you've ever seen a crocodile, I'm sure you've seen a crocodile. How the crocodile scales are very, they look very hard and plated like, like a turtle, I guess, in a way. Different kind of reptile, but the same philosophy. So you give it little scales like that. Put in some more lines over its tummy. This also gives it more of a cylinder look. Gives a bit of depth when you're drawing. Draw. Um, well, you, you get what I'm, you can see what I'm doing here. Kind of making it look like a, a fishnet grid structure again. Then I put more of those little scales on its arm. I'm trying to keep this video short, but I figured, hey, might as well draw in some extra details so you guys can kind of get the idea for that. Draw some wrinkled lines there. If you've seen a bird or any kind of lizard, really, you'll see some. You'll see that they'll have kind of pl um, plated, plated scales down there. So I'm going to give it plated scales along its two ridges. And move them all the way up to its legs. So, you, and then you give it more little scales just to give it detail. That's what makes the difference between a cartoon styled T Rex and a more detailed T Rex. You put in its like little details, it's all about the details. Um, around here. Is where I like to put in wrinkles from where the leg moves. So I'll put in some wrinkles for where the leg moves. Then we'll put some of the lines across there to give it the indication of shape and form. Again, we're getting more technically detailed now. Give it some lines on its knees and its lower abdomen, I guess. Do the exact same thing for this foot like you did for the other foot. Give it little um, plated scales. Sometimes I like to put scales on the back of its um, calf as well. Do the, do it like for the ankles. Rigid um, scale ridges along its toes, like so, we're getting very close to the end now, so basically around here, what you really just want to do is make it kind of look a bit more like a cylinder, so that's when I add little just lines to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional cylinder-esque, so Yes, do it like so. We want to make this video quick now. So we'll just finish up the tail. Put some, finish the lines. I'm hoping you guys can actually hear me on this microphone. I really hope it works. Not talking very loudly because it's kind of late at night, but hey, it is it, whatever happens happens. So let's just get rid of that little annoying stick figure line. And see, like if if you if you look at it now, you can usually keep in the the um. You can usually keep in the stick figure elements for the most part like around here you get rid of them but around here and around there kind of works in with the 
the scales of your dinosauric beast. Yes, I said dinosauric. I know that word doesn't exist. I made it up. <laughs> but yeah. That, my friends, and my viewers, that is how I draw a Tyrannosaurus Rex from Jurassic Park. So I really hope you learnt something from drawing this one, because this is my this is one of my more you know tutorial esque descriptions of how to draw something. So I hope you learnt how to draw draw it, or you know at, at the very least liked watching me draw a T Rex. So. Yes, if you like this, please be sure to like it. If you didn't like it, well, you can vote it down, I suppose. I won't. I won't hold it against you. Or will I? <laughs> no, it's okay. But, um, yeah, if you like this video, like it, comment on it, share it around to people you think might want to learn how to draw a T-Rex. And please subscribe to my channel where I will be adding even more videos down the track to my ever-growing collection of how to draws and just generally me drawing in general lots of all the generals so yes thank you for watching and get to and draw something yourself draw go create draw things just draw be awesome and draw thank you for watching